getting the news uh, of, uh, well, uh, a significant moment in history, in actual fact, uh, because uh, we've heard, and you can see at the bottom of your screen there now, that uh, Lord David Trimble, the former First Minister of Northern Ireland, uh, has passed away. And uh, there he is. He became uh, best known, I suppose, internationally for, of course, he won the Nobel Peace Prize for that, for um, negotiating uh, the Good Friday Agreement uh, uh, alongside uh, that man, not the one uh, in the middle. Uh, it's uh, Bono from U2, but uh, John Hume from the SDLP. Uh, they both won the uh, Nobel Peace Prize uh, for that historic agreement in 1988, which uh, set up that power-sharing executive of... Uh, which he became the First Minister, uh, former leader of the Ulster Unionist Party, as David Trimble as well. Uh, and uh, as you can see there, the family have just released a short statement that he passed away peacefully earlier today following a short illness. So we'll, we'll be talking to our Ireland correspondent, David Blevins, uh, in a little bit to uh, assess the life and times and the huge significance and influence of Lord Trimble upon the the history of Ireland and indeed these islands. Uh, let's, I think I am joined at this very moment by David Blevins. If somebody could confirm that to me, that is confirmed. David, um, this is, as I say, uh, a huge moment in the, in the history of, uh, of these islands uh, and beyond. It is indeed. David Trimble was the co-architect of the Good Friday Agreement. He was the unionist leader who showed enormous courage in signing up to the deal that had been brokered by Senator George Mitchell back in 1998. Many people will remember that the Democratic Unionist Party leader, the Reverend Ian Paisley, rejected the deal completely at that stage. So it was an enormous risk for David Trimble as leader of the Ulster Unionist Party to say yes to the deal. But he was convinced that the Good Friday Agreement would uh, secure Northern Ireland's future as part of the United Kingdom. And so he took that risk, despite objection not just from the other Unionist Party, the DUP, but from within his own party. And I think it, was, it is only really with history that we are able to recognise how courageous a decision that was. He uh, served as the, a member of Parliament for Upper Van for a number of years, but was eventually ousted. Uh, by the DUP, elevated to the Lords. He served uh, as a member of the Upper House uh, for a number of years. But uh, Lord Trimble had been ill in recent weeks. Uh, he appeared recently at the unveiling of a portrait at Queen's University, and it was quite apparent that he was struggling with his health. But I think history will be kind to him in terms of the contribution he made to the search for peace on this island, having gone from a very hard line position, many people People will remember him um, protesting over the, uh, the prohibition of the uh, drum creep parade back in the 1990s to a position where he became more compromising. And ultimately, as a result of that, Northern Ireland was able to see the brokering of that historic agreement in 1998. And what was his view, David, in, in the last few years on the row about the Northern Ireland Protocol? He had a a little bit of a warning for unionists, didn't he, about the approach to take? Yes, David Trimble was always very anti the EU and even though the Ulster Unionist Party of today tends to take a slightly more moderate view on it, he did welcome the decision of the UK to leave the European Union but he was very, very deeply concerned about the Northern Ireland Protocol and felt that despite what had been achieved through the Good Friday Agreement, which of course is underpinned by what's described as the principle of consent, that there will never be any change to the constitutional position of Northern Ireland as part of the United Kingdom unless and until the majority of people in Northern Ireland vote for that kind of change. He was concerned that the protocol, which uh, of course was the way they avoided a hard border on this island by establishing a trade border in the Irish Sea, had raised the question of Northern Ireland's constitutional position as part of the United Kingdom and was adamant that the protocol needed to be significantly changed if not scrapped altogether and had been more vocal about that than any other issue in, in recent years. And just, David, uh, you touched on it, just the, the extent of the gamble he took, in, it, it, and especially for the party he led, the Ulster Unionist Party, which, of course, had been dominant in Northern Ireland since its foundation and, as you say, now eclipsed by the Democratic Unionist Party. 
I think it's difficult probably for people today uh, to really fully understand the extent of the decision that he took, bearing in mind that in 1998, we were only uh, four years after the IRA ceasefire. And because of the courageous decision of the nationalist leader, John Hume, the other co-architect of the Good Friday Agreement, in effectively bringing Sinn Féin in from the cold, bringing Sinn Féin to the negotiating table. And you will remember the enormous decision it was for Jerry Adams and Martin McGuinness to be in, come involved in the political process and for the IRA to leave behind what it described as the armed struggle. That was very difficult for many victims of IRA violence within the Protestant Unionist community. And so David Trimble was always going to face quite a challenge in persuading them that a deal could be done that would secure Northern Ireland's place in the United Kingdom until the majority of people here voted otherwise. But he did manage to persuade enough unionists to come with him on that journey and despite, as I say, opposition from without his party and from within his party, he stayed the course really uh, until eventually, I think because of delays over the decommissioning of IRA weapons, the DUP were man did manage to eclipse the Ulster Unionist Party. But I think also, Dermot, it is worth reflecting tonight on the fact that in the course of the last five years, we've now lost Martin McGuinness uh, we've lost uh, John Hume, we've lost David Trimble, and a very short time before that, we lost the Reverend Ian Paisley. So we really are witnessing uh, the end of an era in Northern Ireland politics, especially in a year when we've had an election that saw Sinn Féin become the largest party at Stormont, a nationalist first minister-elect for the very first time.